fewer. Do we know? I've never because cheated. You can, because you can do a survey. That's how you know. I've never cheated. I don't know. I never but did the survey. I think high mileage should be with high mileage. So what is going on here? Well, this is a video that I found on SauceCast with Adam Sosnick. And uh, it gives us evidence, maybe even proof, that uh, men have been right all along, that women who sleep around are not are not good long-term partners. They just don't have what it takes for whatever reason, um, whether that is because they're born that way, they're born and they've always wanted to just sleep around, or because they have slept around, they just don't make long, good long-term partners, uh, good monogamous partners. And of course, there are exceptions, but this is uh, speaking to the majority of people in the world. And it used to be the, a time, it used to be the case that, that women had to society was structured in such a way that basically a woman either she settled down and got married or she had nothing to do with men period in fact in many places it was illegal to be seen in public with men who are not your relatives or you if you were like going out to date etc you went with male relatives because it was a social event and they were there to make sure that you didn't do something that uh, a young lady was not supposed to be doing with a young man now, before we get started, I do want to point out to all of the don't talk over the video warriors that there will be a link to this entire video down in the comments. So go ahead and check that out if you don't want to listen to me talking over it during it. Now, uh, please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. I thank everybody for stopping by and supporting my work. You can find me over on Rumble, on X, on BitChute. Now let's dive in here. Michael sent me a tweet. This is pretty important, and I'm gonna let Michael take the stage here. Uh, let's pull the tweet up. Stand. And it basically has to do with higher body counts uh, in married women and how linked to their higher probability. Can we ask a question before we show the <laughs> Michael, answer? I'm gonna allow you, you know what? As CEO of this state, of this show, I'm gonna give you Chief Operating Officer uh, alignment. Go ahead, Michael, this, the floor is yours. Ladies, uh, put a red, uh, a green if you think it does matter, a red if you think it doesn't matter. Does body count matter? Does a woman's body count matter before she gets married to a man? Does it have any, does it have any direct correlation to happiness in the relationship? Put a red if you think it does, put a, uh, I'm sorry, red if you think it doesn't, and green if you think it does. Michael, you have to all right, so we got about a 50-50 split here. In fact, we haven't exactly a 50-50 split. There's eight women. Four of them say, yeah, it matters. And four of them say, no, it doesn't matter. Remind them to put it up high. Put it up high so we can all see it. Got okay. it. Okay, cool. So cool. we've got about 50-50 situation. We so have you're, no, so, it doesn't count. So yes, ready? yes, no, no, no. no. Okay. So, so for those of you who said, yes, can you keep your red ones up, the green ones, you guys can put it down. If I were to do a, a study and I were to look at women who cheat in a relationship and women who don't cheat in a relationship, and I was looking at previous sexual partners, would I find more sexual partners in women who did cheat in a relationship or women who didn't cheat in a relationship? What do you guys think? Did. Who did? No, no, the, you three. Well, the, you. So, you know, are, are women who cheat likely to have more sexual partners before they get married? This is the question. And I mean, the way he stated it was kind of confusing, but let's see what the women have to say here, if they have to say anything. Four. Would I find more sexual partners in women who did cheat in a, in a marriage or women who didn't? No, Previous I think sexual they partners. probably well, got it all out of their huh? system. They don't need to cheat. Right. So, I, so I you're saying, you're saying I, should, <laughs> I should find the same number of sexual partners in women who did cheat and women who didn't cheat before they got married. Is that correct? I mean, are you really going to ask him? Like, does it matter that weird. much to you? No, no, bring no, no, Excel uh, sheet to there you go with the, oh, does it matter that much to you? Why do you care? Why is it a big deal? The, these women don't understand that we don't want to swim around. They, they think, they're thinking like, like them. They're thinking like women. <laughs> think about how they think about men. They think men say, think the same way. I don't want to swim around, swim around in another man's leavings. That's disgusting. These women don't care. Like if a man has sex with a hundred women or one woman before they met her, they don't really care. I mean, they, they actually probably do care if it's lower. In most cases, what I've seen is women want a man who has some experience so you can bring that experience to the bedroom to please them. So what they can get out of the situation. And it's ridiculous. Men don't want that experience. We want to teach you. We want a woman who is willing to want to learn and go through these experiences with us instead of us coming to the table knowing everything or them coming to the table knowing everything. I mean, I think a man, I think the average man, if, if you could sit him down and say, look, you're only going to get, you only get one partner, but at the same time, she's only going to have one partner in you. And that's, that's all that you get. You could either have that or you could have a hundred partners or a thousand partners and you don't get one long-term relationship. I think most men are going to go with the, I want a long-term relationship. Not all men, but I mean, you have that added bonus of you have somebody that's got your back as you get older, especially that's going to be important. So 
to, an, uh, to a relationship that's, that's weird. Maybe excessive. someone got all. I don't no, no, know, I'm not 21. asking anything. I'm asking. They're, they're different. Uh, we do a survey with thousands of people, and I do. When we do the survey, we ask women: You women who cheated, do you? How many sexual partners do you have? And you women who didn't cheat, how many sexual partners do you have? If I, when I do the survey, am I going to find out that women who have cheated are they going to have more sexual partners before they were married or fewer? How the fuck do we know? I've never because cheated you can, because you can do a survey. That's how you know. Mm -hmm. I've never cheated. I don't know. I never did the survey. I think high mileage should be with high mileage. Okay. That's cool. just my opinion. So, I, I, what I was little, so the I'm answer sorry, that you guys, I'm you guys, oh, I'm sorry, question. the answer that you guys have to give is that you should have the same number of sexual partners for women who did cheat and women who didn't, because you just said by holding up the red thumbs down that there is no correlation between a woman having more sexual partners before she's married and the likelihood of her cheating. So, if we did a study, study please. Okay. <laughs> what we should find. Let's read it here. Higher body count in married women associated with significantly higher prevalence of cheating on their husband. <laughs> So there you go. Men have suspected that women who were promiscuous this whole time were more likely to, to cheat in a long-term monogamous relationship. And why is this so important? Why is this an important thing to look at? Why is it so much worse? And I'm going to tell you this right now. Why is it so much worse that a woman cheat than a man cheat? Okay. Well, if a woman cheats, she can be dishonestly requiring a man give his resources to her child, right? That's, that's how it is. Like, oh, this is your child. And it turns out that he's paying for 18, 19, 25 years of expenses to help raise this individual who is not his. Did he sign on for that? If he signed on for it, that's, that's one thing. But if he didn't sign on for it, that's another thing. Whereas if a man cheats, he gets a woman pregnant. You know, th there's, there's no dishonesty about it after that point. It's like, okay, well, I'm giving my resources to my child from this woman and my child from this woman. That's just how it is. So I can, I, I have enough resources that I can spread them around a little bit. But anyway, moving on, they're going to discuss the uh, survey at this point. Is that the, really the same, we should find the same, we should find the same number of punch it all, Emily. I mean, it doesn't, Hold on. Well, it's, wait, I love oh, the Michael, it's, oh, Michael's time oh, to no, speak. No, no, my, my favorite part is it's all circumstantial and you don't care about studies and I haven't even pulled up the study yet. Maybe the study agrees with you. You don't know. But the answer is, <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> but here's the thing. Women who, have cheated in, women who have cheated in a marriage have 230% more sexual partners before they're married than women who don't cheat in a marriage. So there the is a now data showing a scientific correlation for, between high body count and a likelihood of a woman and cheating in a relationship now well there you go there's the evidence you would think you would think that their rationale was was sound because it's, it's valid right you think that hey woman got it out of her system beforehand so she's not going to want to do it after the fact but i think what happens uh is that a woman who is doing this who's being with a lot of different partners they enjoy the that that newness the novelty of the experience so they want to continue having that experience they get bored too easily in a marriage now the data is over. The, the question that you had on here before, that's a fun question to ask. We don't have to ask anymore. Does body count matter? The answer is yes. Let's show the data real quick. I would so, assume you know, that they wouldn't show your work. they got, they got that. enough sex. You can, you can, Michael, but, would you be a, a professor would and stand up and should point to yeah, something? So, so the, main, the main thing I want yes. you to look at here is total male <laughs> sexual partners ever cheated, no and yes, and you go right there. The mean. For women who did not cheat, it was 3.87, and for women who did cheat, it was 8.93. That is two and a half, that's 2.3 times as much. If you read on the bottom, the average number of male sexual partners for married women who cheated in, uh, on their husbands was 2.3 times higher than those who did not cheat. An independent test found that the difference means uh, between the two groups was stati st statistically significant. Okay. I do want to point out here that the number of these women, the number of the partners that these women are claiming that they have, three and a half and versus nine, that is, that's like really low number. So these these women that are getting married, who've had only nine partners, how many how many women do you know, dear viewer, who are say twenty five and have had only nine partners? How many women do you know, dear viewer, who by the time they got married had nine or fewer partners? That's not a big number in, in my experience. There's not a whole lot of women out there who have only been with nine or fewer, single digit, single digits uh, with their partners, right? Women, women these days get around. You, you see women who are 18 and they've already had triple digits. It's like, what, why is that what you want out of life? And then they think that they can just flip it around and go, hey, I'm just going to settle down with one guy and I'm going to be with him for the rest of my life. But the reality is you already have changed your psychology probably to think that variety and abundance is is what you deserve and should be chasing after whether or not you you want to do that after you get married or not your mind is already set up for that situation 
So if it was 10% more for women who cheated, or 20% more, no, it's 230% more. <laughs> like this is, uh, this is, this is undeniable at this point. That's wow. the first thing. So Michael, um, because we got to get to Rolo, give us your final assessment on what happened. You've, you've showed us the evidence. You've laid out your case. I know law school was abolished, yeah. but I, I, this is something that you're going to allow <laughs> yes. to show the jury here, prevent your, uh, present your evidence, and let them know where they should do and how they should implement yes. this information to their life. There's, if you guys want to sleep with hundreds of men, that's not the issue. That's not the problem we're saying. But what we are saying is there may be some correlation between a woman who either wants to have sex with a lot of men not being successful in a marriage, or a woman having sex with a lot of men causing different neurological changes or endocrine, or endocrine changes that cause her to not be able to function in a marriage. And so good advice might be, according to this data, to not have a ton of sexual partners before you get married, and for men to not marry a woman with a lot of sexual partners. This is not the only data that's done this. This is just one that was done in 2021. This is the whole virgin bride well, but, but my, my point yeah. is, my point is, I never, with a high, what's a high value man? Keep asking that if you want. Yeah. Does body count matter? That question's done. <laughs> Got it. Okay, last question, ladies, and then we're going to go to the happy ending. All right, so that's basically it for the video. Let's go ahead. There's a, there's a comment here that I wanted to take a look at. Let's, let's take a look at that here. It's the first one, so not very difficult to get to. I'm engaged to someone who had never had a boyfriend before. The experience has been 1,000 times better than all the other women I dated, many of which had 12 plus partners. I could tell a huge difference in how she behaves as a partner and how committed she is to making the relationship work. It's really not rocket science. We live in a world where most men who get married are getting destroyed financially through divorce and they can significantly reduce the risk by being selective in dating women who aren't promiscuous. Except there aren't very many of those women. They're hard to find. You know, you got like less than 1% of the population of females in the country who are unmarried and not promiscuous. And it probably you could say it's less than 1% of the population overall, whether married or not, is or has been promiscuous, you know. I was listening to the radio, uh, morning radio stuff when I would drive into LA. And there, there was a woman on one of the, she, she worked for the studio. She wasn't like a main host or anything. She might've been like a secondary personality or something, but she had only been only ever been with her husband and she would, she would lament that. She's like, I wish I had, you know, slept around. And, and it's like, this is disgusting that the way that, that uh, our civilization is to teach women that they should be out there exploring as many different men as possible. What do you think you're really ultimately going to get out of that situation if you are exploring as many different people as possible? W what does that give to you? It gives you a new, a, a new high every, you know, Every few days or a few weeks or a few months gives you a new, a new rush of, hey, look, there's somebody new. That's it. That's all that it gives you. That's not how our civilization can function, though. No civilization can function in that, in that manner. Primitive cultures could, I suppose, but then you're also dealing with a limited number of people anyway because it's like, oh, we have a tribe of 100 people. The 33 of them are women, 32 of them are men, and the rest are children. Okay, we're going to experience all the women. Uh, all right. How many are you going to experience a week? One. So after a year, you do more than experienced all the women in your tribe so that would be a different story now personal story time i dated one girl that i know of who was she definitely had a high body count um she wouldn't disclose to me exactly the number and you know how women lie about it so i, I don't know how high it was but it was definitely up there and we had a long great we, we didn't really fight or anything and, and we always had fun times together uh whether we were just chilling out or doing whatever you know and the thing is though i don't think she took the relationship seriously and why didn't she take the relationship seriously? I think it's because that she knew there was another man right around the corner. If she wanted, she could just, okay, well, this is over with. I'm going to go find somebody else. Oh, if he breaks up with me, that's fine. Let's go find somebody else. I don't care. In fact, after we broke up, she ended up getting married. And then when that ended, way less than two years later, she comes crawling back to me and going, hey, you know, I'm, I'm divorced now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not surprised. I knew this was going to happen. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did, honestly. And she's like, what are you talking about? How did you know that? I'm like, you make bad choices when it comes to men. Here I am giving you everything that you need and want in a relationship, the companionship, the devotion, and the bedroom stuff that you need. You, you didn't, I mean, obviously you probably want me to be like better financially, but this is, you, when she, when we got together, I was unemployed. So you knew what you were getting into when you were getting together with me. And she had a job making, a, a good job making decent money. So it was fine from her end. But it's like, yeah, you, you threw our relationship away. I mean, I broke up with her, but it's because she wasn't participating in the relationship. It's like, this is not a relationship. This is you here when it's convenient for you, basically. And I'm not, I'm not about that. You need to want to, to see me. You want to be with me. If you don't want that, then what are we doing here? So, yeah, uh, that was a long time ago. Though. I don't know what, where she's at or what, what's happened to her. She did reach out to me a few years ago, and by then I'm married. So I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm already good. 
Uh, so too bad for you. But here we go. Proof that men have been right all along and that women need to keep their pants on because that's what's going to make for a long-term stable relationship. Thank you for watching. Again, I do appreciate it. Here's your palate cleanser. Got some right here. You got some right here. Whoa. <laughs> hey, you got some right here. You got some right here.